James Madison is a signing that can help transform Spurs under Ange Postacoglu. What do I mean? Well, in today's video, I'm going to explain exactly how that can happen. So let's get straight on with it. In Postacoglu's 2-3-5 shape, James Madison will take on the role in the right-hand sided half space, normally occupied by the advanced 8 or the number 10. And the reason I say number 10 is because the modern footballing way, um, these right-hand sided half space players occupied in Pep Guardiola's, Mikel Arteta's, Roberto De Zerbi's, and many more, including Postacoglu's systems, this right-hand sided half space player is often balanced out on the left hand side by the number eight required to be defensively much more switched on and useful in the build-up dropping deeper and madison only really has this latter quality so like i said he'll find himself more on the right hand side so for madison to spurs think a more specialized number 10 role not the typical ability to roam in behind the whole front line uh, but more occupy a specific area of the pitch and dominate it. That's what James Madison can bring to Spurs. And this is a position that James Madison is tailored for when attacking in between the midfield and defensive lines of the opposition. In the deeper areas, he has the half space crossing and the progressive passing through the lines. And when in and around the box, he has that clever movement. And importantly, I think the desire to break the lines and get in behind and certainly the ball striking to hit the ball across the goal from that right hand side. I think his ability to get in behind through overlaps and underlaps give him a sort of untapped potential that Postacoglu will certainly try and reach into at his time in Spurs. And look, imagine him, I think, combining on the edge of the box with someone like a Dijan Kulisevsky out there on the right hand side. That dynamism will certainly get more out, out of the Swedish international, um, I think, as well. Kulisevsky is another half-space crosser, um, but I think with another man, uh, another dynamic runner in behind next to him, it will give Spurs a better chance to break sides down and not just looking all the time for Kulisevsky. Suddenly now defenders have to think about a runner off their shoulder. And really, Madison is the first behind-the-lines player Spurs have. I know Son can do it. Uh, to an extent, but that's coming off the left-hand side into central areas. We're talking about here a player who can play in and around in those tight areas, quick combinations, interchanges, leave a defence for dust and find himself in those channels in behind that he can operate so well in. He's that first dynamic midfield player that Spurs have had for a while, You know, normally characterised by a flat midfield with a lack of hesit hesitancy and bravery. Now Madison has that quality in that final action, that courage, uh, that devastating end product. You know, like I said, this right-hand sided half space is a position that Madison is already very comfortable in from his time at Norwich, but more importantly, certainly at the last, um, certainly in the last season under Brendan Rodgers, up until Christmas time, Leicester often built in a 3-2-5 shape. Obviously, it's not the 2-3-5 that Postacoglu builds in. But again, it's the exact same area of the pitch that Madison will be operating in, in that right-hand side half space. And I think in terms of options on the transfer market, he is one of the very few options that fit that unique profile to that um, right-hand side in number 10 that you find in a, a Fernandez, a Kevin De Bruyne, and Erdegaard in the Premier League. Like I said, I'll go back to that brutally devastating final third quality, that guaranteed output, whether that's creatively or Madison's ball striking. Of course, he's nowhere near those aforementioned players, their level yet. But Postacoglu is trying to find his own type of player, his own player in that mould. Um, and Madison certainly has the potential to be that. And to some extent is already there. And like I said, now there's a trend in football management obsessed with the 3-2-5 shape or in Postacoglu's case, the 2-3-5 shape where he inverts two fullbacks as opposed to one into midfield. And you see you need a right-hand sided half-space player with that final action quality. The names, of course, I've already mentioned. Um, Liverpool also play this way now as well. I mean, maybe Gakpo could be an internal solution to that role. Henderson has played there, so it shows how maybe for Liverpool they need more of a, a hard worker over on that right-hand side, but it's certainly why they're looking at 
Mason Mount, Dominic Sobersloy from RB Leipzig. That could be, you know, their external solutions. That dynamic solution in that right sided role is something that's really popular nowadays. Um, and in a way, the output that comes from this part of the pitch now, even in deeper areas, we've seen from a Trent Alexander Arnold or Kevin De Bruyne from deeper crosses, this may insinuate that Postacoglu is okay with having a striker that solely focuses on attacking the box, making runs into the box instead of dropping in like Harry Kane has done so well for Spurs. And it might it may be why this is a time that they can let Harry Kane go. If you want to see a video on my thoughts on the Harry Kane's and Bayern Munich um, situation, I certainly can do that. So Spurs fans, let me know your thoughts. But Postacoglu certainly in his time at Celtic and over in Australia has always had a very penalty box focused striker. Of course, Madison also gives them a, a set piece specialist as well. But I think what makes him even more intriguing is that he also has that build-up capacity. We've seen it at Leicester oftentimes where he's had to be that sole creative focus. He's dropped deep and really taken on a responsibility in that first and second phase progression. And I mean, if Postacoglu ever looks to invert only one fullback, drop Madison into a midfield three, he has that wide circulation and line-breaking passes to play that deeper role if they're fully in control of a game. But why might this differ in the short term? Why might we not see James Madison play in this right-sided half space straight away? This ties into Postacoglu having to change his shape at times, and I certainly think he will have to in the short term. And before I look into Madison uh, in more of an early days, playing a quintessential number 10 in a 4 2 3 one if you want to see a full breakdown of what Postacoglu's approach will be like at Spurs, with his 2-3-5, with his double inverted fullbacks, his aggressive 4-4-2 press, and the necessity for him, I think, to have a bit of short-terminism amidst a Spurs squad largely unsuited to his style of play, then you can watch the full breakdown and analysis of his style of play on the channel now. But going back to James Madison, I think Ange Postacoglu will have to be more pragmatic in his earlier times at Spurs as the squad adapts and he slowly is able to bring in the players that he wants. I've touched on the inverted fullbacks, the double inverted fullbacks that Spurs don't really have the type of profile that can do that yet. I don't think Porro or Emerson can do it effectively from the right hand side. I don't think Perisic can from the left either. Maybe Destiny and Dogi, their new left back they signed last year from Italy, can do that. But as a general rule of thumb, they don't have Postacoglu's ideal squad yet. Of course, we shouldn't expect them to. You know, it's dubious whether they have a player that can play in a lone six. Again, this is a problem that I touch on in my video. So we may see po Postacoglu go to a 4-2-3-1 shape uh, and use a double pivot, like we've seen Arteta do in his early days at Arsenal. Um, we've seen Ten Hag do it at Manchester United and then slowly try and implement their style of play. Or maybe Postacoglu goes for a 4-3-3 that he uses anyway in his first phase of build-up before he transitions into a 2-3-5 further up the pitch. Maybe he stays in this shape to simplify things for the players. I think the question remains for Postacoglu and Spurs is whether Ange is ready to do this. He's still an unproven manager at the top level, of course, he's unproven. Um, but he needs to be given time. And this is a big part of whether he'll be a success at Spurs or not. But he is part of that. He needs to show a level of um, pragmatism and short-terminism in order to ensure some sort of results early on in his time as manager. So in the case of James Madison, in a 4-2-3-1, he'll play a more traditional number 10. Again, suits him as he loves to drift and roam around, occupy the left-hand sided half space as well. We've seen him do that at Leicester very often. So... I think this is why he can be such a, a brilliant signing, whether that's in the advanced eight, a right inside a 10 or a more typical creative outlet. Madison can excel and this ability of him to be so useful and elevate a team to the next level for Postacoglu, whether that's in the short term or long term, almost makes him a sort of dream transfer in a way. And it's why Spurs fans should be so happy. You know, you're getting your own calibre and mark of player that we've seen 
on the right hand side in the right hand side of half space the top teams go for so regularly now in european football as well you've got your own player that can take on that mantle and try and develop into that sort of player in a james madison and also someone who can help you short term so i am even as an arsenal fan myself a big fan of the signing but i don't want to love up james madison all the way i want to also provide a, a balanced scouting report and I want to offer potential areas of his game where he can still uh, improve playing in a Postacoglu system. I think offensively, of course, he has the ability be to become one of the best in the league. But defensively, clearly in the duels, he isn't the best. Um, and that's why he is more suited for a Spurs than the Newcastle links we've seen floating around. At Spurs, there's a system and midfield that uh, compensates for his uh, defensive lack. A, instead of a Newcastle um, midfield with an uber physicality, athleticism, aggression, dual winners, running power. Um, and again, the right hand sided number eight or advanced 10 role in Postacoglu's system, this modern 325 or 235 isn't required to be as complete as the left hand sided eight, which we've already touched on. And then whether he plays with a double pivot behind him earlier on, this isn't this defensive lack in his dual winning, you know, maybe positional awareness side of things isn't as much of a worry than maybe some people have aired. I would say the thing that is a bit more concerning and somewhere where Postacoglu will certainly try and develop, um, we've seen the questions around his work rate, that may seem trivial to some. But Postacoglu will look, you know, he looks to aggressively press at Celtic. He pressed um, oftentimes or most times in a 4-4-2. The ball side eight, which in James Madison's case is the advanced eight, advanced 10, um, is often required to press through tenaciously with the ball side striker um, to press the player on with the ball. And the opposite striker tucks into the flat four in midfield. I think Postacoglu to sign Madison must be convinced that this is a side to his game that he has. I certainly think he has that tenacity in his running, but in a defensive side, this certainly can be improved. I think overall, his general attitude has improved over the last season too. Um, this isn't coming from obviously a Leicester fan. And I'd like to see if there, you know, if there are any of you watching what you think of, you know, to that side of James Madison's game. But he certainly has the mental side, which is very important in terms of believing in himself. And of course, you have to have that if you want to take the next step up in his career, which of course he's he's doing from going from Leicester, unfortunately relegated to the championship, to now Spurs. And before I finish, I want to touch on a more intangible benefit that could come out of this Madison transfer and what it shows the relationship between Levy and Postacoglu. Levy reportedly has been a massive part of this deal. And I think looking from the outside, this hopefully means that Daniel Levy is ready to give Postacoglu his full backing and time to build the squad he wants at Spurs. Some Spurs fans will say, finally. But I think Madison is certainly a signing that fits this new dynamic era and horizon for Tottenham Hotspur as a football club. That, they, that Postacoglu can hopefully give them from this transfer window and Madison as a signing is a great start especially with the other profiles that have been aired as reported rumors for Spurs over the the last days and weeks um, for example Mickey van den Ven and also the new signing of course Vicario the goalkeeper from Empoli these are the right profiles and being allowed to get these right profiles for Postacoglu's long-term vision will hopefully uh, signify a good relationship between board and manager, a cohesion on the same level. And look, Madison is such an exciting player player for them. So that's my thoughts. Spurs fans, what do you think? Um, if I were you, I would be super, super excited for James Madison as a potential signing. His ability to elevate your side, both in the short and long term, and his suitability, especially offensively, in that right-hand-sided half space. The ability to play in between the lines in tight spaces, to get beyond the line, and to link up, combine with others. He can dominate that specific area of a pitch um, with his offensive brilliance. So again, like I said, 
a super signing, around 40 million, a very good price as well, despite Leicester being relegated. So all in all, a good start to business in the life of Ange Postacoglu. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.